Alright, so today's topic is epitopes. Something the the smallest unit that a body can recognize as a foreign object, start taking action upon it or against it. Well, actually, uh, three different types of epitopes. So, uh, let's talk about what those are. So, the thing is that we see this thing uh, over here, it says haptin molecules, carrier molecules, and then we see we have a complete antigen. So, obviously, these are parts of antigen, right? These are this plus this equals this, right? What is a haptin, though? Right. A heptin is actually a small uh, molecule, and actually by itself, right, it won't actually cause an immune, uh, immune response. Now, these things bind to uh, carrier molecules, also known as immunogens, and uh, together, they will actually form the complete antigen, which will actually provoke the immune response. Now, what's uh, special about the carrier molecule? Well, when the uh, you have those neutrophils, right, things like that, who are they going to act against? Are they going to act against the heptins? Or are they going to act against the carrier molecule, aka the immunogen? It's going to actually act against the carrier molecule. Sometimes people use immunogen and the antigen uh, interchangeably, and you have to be able to recognize when, when they're using that in that context. But just so you know, the technically really direct uh, carrier molecule plus the haptin molecule is actually the complete answer. So even though I could say like the immune response is acting against the uh, the immunogen, right? Or the it's uh, this active part, right? This might be a cell or something, right? With little pieces attached to it, right? So that's pretty much all there is to it. It's not really uh, anything super complicated. Once again, I do have a document here that uh, contains most of this uh, information. Immunogens also, by the way, evoke a specific immune response, right? So let's suppose your body has like invaded by uh, by a type of a bacteria, let's say a coccus bacteria. Then your body's going to have a, a different response to that particular, uh, you know, bacterial infection versus a uh, different type of bacterial infection or a viral infection, something like that, right? It's going to release specific antibodies to uh, handle that response. And even in the innate system, there are different, uh, you know, even though inflammation is always uh, uh, certain molecules may have, uh, may trip off the innate system a little bit more than others, you know, depending on how widespread it is, you know, things of that nature, right? The different injuries will cause invasion from different microbes, right? It may uh, trigger slightly different responses you know, the level of response, right? Because uh, let's say, for example, like a larger parasite, right? That will still, uh, it's the same thing, inflammation, things like that, but it's just a larger uh, beast inside of your body. So it's just going to have a, you know, a larger effect, you know, more cytokines bringing in. So there is some, that statement is, can be misconstrued, right? That's just why I'm repeating it because you will have the same reaction, right? But the level, the scale of uh, how that reaction is um, triggered will be uh, due to different um, qualities of the, uh, microbe or foreign object. okay? Now, uh, we were talking about immunogens, we talked about haptins, right? But we see, um, and just remember, they cannot tr trigger a specific immune response all by themselves. They have to be attached to something, right? But there's something called tolerogens, right? Tolerogens. So what do you think that is, right? Uh, well, obviously, probably t it's going to tolerate something, right? So here's actually a nice little graph right here. We can see that the first exposure, right? Something's going to actually, your body's going to um, have a particular response, right? Now, the thing is that the innate system, by the way, uh, if you get exposed to that uh, uh, immunogen again, right, you'll have the same, relatively same innate response if, as long as the, uh, it's presented in the same way. But your adaptive response system will actually have a larger immune response, right? So overall, your immune response will be higher, right? So that's why once you get, like, let's say, uh, chicken pox, right? If you go through the whole course and normally if you're exposed a month later, right, then your body will be able to fight it off before you really start to show the symptoms. That's how you develop an immunity to these kinds of things. But here, right, we can see there's something called a t tolerogen, right, where it's actually decreased. You get exposed to something and then all of a sudden your immune response system is not kicking up as hard. So let's think about what would cause uh, or why would that be useful, right? So well, we might wish that if we were exposed to, let's say, right, like an allergy, right? It would be nice, wouldn't it, if uh, tolerogens could make us less responsive to that. But unfortunately, that's not how it works, usually, right? Maybe in the case of uh, some people outgrowing their allergies, right? This may be involved somehow. But really, the primary way that this is involved is as in terms of uh, recognizing self, right? Once your body, you know, it's, uh, there's a um, system in your body that can create trillions of different kinds of antibodies against all kinds of different... Uh, invaders and sometimes those uh the the uh, antibodies they're going to make are going to be against your own cells there's a whole host of uh they're called autoimmune disorders right uh probably one of the most famous of them is lupus 
right? They're diabetes, right? Can be an autoimmune disorder, right? Type one. So uh, yeah, telurogens prevent that from happening. So you expose to yourself, right? And then you can expose to yourself next time you don't really want to have a large immune response to yourself, right? So that's what telurogens are really for. And those are the three players. One, once again, it's immunogens, right? The haptins and the telurogens. So just go over that again. It's a pretty easy concept, but uh, just go over it again until you really understand what's going on. Uh, I do have this uh, little um, PDF uh, or PowerPoint available for you. Uh, you might want to take these pictures and inject them into uh, this space here or move things around, right? Uh, you might not want to, right? It's up to you. But uh, for your own personal notes, it's best if you rewrite them and do them yourself. So uh, I just hope this was helpful. Check out the rest of the series. Thanks. Bye. All right, that's it. Thanks for checking out SGU TV. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out our other videos.